Hi guys, I'm Fasten and I'm an official ESL community caster for Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege is a first person shooter. I've been casting for just over three months and I've been casting in two different leagues. In this video, which is a collaboration with the British Esports Association, I will explain to you what helped me improve my casting. I'm going to show you what I call out and why I call specific things out. There is a little disclaimer here. Because I have been casting for just over three months, I'm not an expert in these fields. I'm sharing my insights in casting in hopes to get more individuals involved in casting. When my application was approved, the ESL admin told me that they were getting more applications from females and they were possibly inspired by me. And honestly, I felt honored. This video is just to show you what helped me improve my casting. And if you are interested in becoming a caster as well, there's lots of videos on YouTube that could help you as well. Let's get to Casting 101, the very basics of casting. There's multiple styles of casting, but there's two very important ones. Color casting and play-by-play -play casting. Play-by-play -play casting is basically describing what is going on and who is doing what. It's step-by-step -step describing what is going on at that exact moment. Here's an example of play-by-play -play casting. I'm describing who is doing what, how much time there is left, and I'm describing the further events in this round. They are going to be held off. Exactly. Lamalati was also spotted, so that's that's probably why they were able to kill him. But that's a reaper here onto the jackal. That's a really really nice song here by Alias, and he gets to go back towards the side. That is your jackal gone. You're not going to be able to see any more uh, rumors here, as I do think that the rumors have made their way back towards the side. That is totally fine. It's only 50 more seconds. They've wasted enough time, and it's looking like we're going to go for a yellow push. We see you already also going down, sir, so they're possibly going to try and open up this wall here, so they can push from that wall and possibly from yellow as well. Well, but that's you already spotting out the player down onto the journal. What are you doing, Pixel Peaks? I do not think it's a smart idea to stand there and get your feet taken off so easily. We do see um, a bandit trick here onto the wall, not looking too good as they won't be getting that wall opened. But there is some pressure from blue stairs. Uh, sorry, yellow stairs. There's no blue stairs on this map. But it's 20 seconds. Nomad onto the yellow stairs. IQ actually being injured and taken down by Ilias, and that is a nomad being taken down as well. It's up to a 1v3 for Yordi. He's on low HP. He is close to the yellow door, but there is a person going to be contested. Testing him onto the yellow door. He misses the shots onto the Maestro, but Maestro is able to take him down as soon as he wants to walk into yellow. The other casting style is color casting, which is analyzing what happened in a specific round, who did what, and what effect something had on the outcome of the round. Knowledge is key when it comes to color casting. It is required to understand how the game works. My advice would be to watch pro games and listen to what the casters say. It'll also help you understanding how the game works. In the next video, you'll see me explaining why they picked a specific site. I'm looking back at the last time they defended this site, what they did, and how it helped them to win this round. After that, I continue to do play-by-play -play casting. Crucial bit of that round that they could have lost. Yeah, exactly. And in the second round, it was the Happy Campers that went to the Omri Locker site. They've had a full rotation out of the so they can go back to uh, the site. The only site that they won on defense. So I am hoping that they can hold up to it as, as long as they did in the last round. And they made it almost impossible for the players to push from that Omri wall. So they had to go towards the office side. So I'm really hoping they can actually extend this, this uh, or hold back this push for a long time. But that's... That's the Maverick taking a lot of HP now by that, and it's a run out from Riker and he gets the kill onto Pixel. That is your main fragger gone, but because Pixel was already on 6 kills if I'm not mistaken, and he gets to rotate back towards side safely. That is definitely going to shake the attackers off here, it's only 2 more minutes remaining. If you want to start out with casting, the best thing to do is to practice as much as possible. Open up some matches from your favorite game and listen to what the casters are saying. This will help you to get familiar with the specific terms they're using. After that, turn the sound off and cast over the rounds yourself. It could be useful to record this, to look back at it and see what you did right and what you did wrong. I've been practicing solo casting a lot, but if you have the opportunity to do a duo cast, which is casting with someone else, it could also really help your process. I do play-by-play -play casting most of the times, and what I usually focus on is what is happening at that exact moment in the round, and what effect could this have on the outcome of the round. Who is getting killed? Does it have a small or a big impact? How much time is there left? What have they accomplished? Where is the push coming from? That are just questions that I ask myself, so I can describe what is going on at that exact moment. In the next clip, you'll see me describe a spawn beak. The person is killing Hibana, which is the only person on our team that can open up reinforced walls, which obviously has a big impact on the round. 
After that, I'll keep on describing where the players are and what their setup is like. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a very risky spot for you, Karen. You see, Elias getting the kill onto Skull well performed. And look at that. That is your Hibana gun. That is your only hot creature. With only 10 seconds being into the round, really, that is not looking good for the attackers already. I do think that the bridge is going to be playing on top. And we did see the Valkyrie actually placing a really nice camera onto meeting room, if I'm not mistaken. So once these operators start to attack the first, the, sorry, the top floor, which they have to do before they want to maybe push towards lobby, you have to get top control they will be no they will be scanned and that is not going to be good for the attackers which are already in an attacker disadvantage here in the next clip you'll see me describing the current situation what have the attackers accomplished so far and how much time is there left i'm describing how many people are still alive and there is a slight disadvantage for the attackers because they don't have the diffuser to defuse the bomb i also describe the current location of one of the defenders I'm just worried right now on. Yeah, I totally understand your worry because it's only a minute remaining and all they've got so far is top floor control. So they need to make their push downstairs now. But there's four defenders and two attackers. And look at that, the attackers still don't have the diffuser. I'm not sure what's going on here, but they do not have the diffuser. How do they want to push down towards the side and actually get a plant on? Well, it's Lamalati here holding the angle on towards the hatch. So if they drop, it's definitely going to be disastrous for the attackers here. So as a play-by-play -play caster, your main purpose is to describe the current situation. Where are the players and what are they doing? Usually, towards the end of the round, it gets more tense. So that is where you want the hype to come out as well. The next couple of clips are some of my play-by-play -play casting. All right, we see the Zufia turning towards the kitchen. The Pulse is aware of the fact that there is a player jumping into this wall here now. He can pass an information through to his team. The Valkyrie is still there to have the cross angle onto the Zofia walking in as she gets the shots onto the Zofia. There should be another one at this window, but they, the person there is now aware of the fact that there's at least one or possibly two players in that kitchen there. Right. Ooh, and losing your drone jar while attempting to drone out the office is not really good as well, but we see the Jaeger here in a perfect position. If someone is to walk into office right now, he could just peek around the corner and possibly take their hats off. There's also two people Bob in fountains, if I'm not mistaken, so they're really expecting this whole here to come from uh, office, as it's right to get the kill onto Lamalati. That's your IQ gone, and your Thermite gone, so it's up to a 1v4, and it's not going to happen. That is the Maverick being gunned down here. They expected the push from office, and they made sure they could handle it in a good way. Three. That's not good. Noma was inside, but she gets taken down by Pixel here. That is not good for the attackers. Uh, Yordi still has a diffuser though, but I'm not too sure where Yordi is at the moment as it's Boogie going back towards these yellow stairs. Right going to kill my Psy and another one onto Yordi. That is the diffuser, but it's up to Fred in a 1v3. Can he make it happen? Can he get three kills in the last 50 seconds? Or can he obtain a diffuser and possibly go for a plant? I don't think so, because it's Valkyrie and she probably has a camp somewhere so she can spot out where Pred is. Pred is at the Aelor, possibly Peeking. There is a person behind the table. He is going to get for the diffuser, but there's a person at the long desk missing the shots under the person on the long desk. That is not good. He's injured, but that's a dog. He can pick himself back up again. It's he has to kill three defenders, but it's not going to happen. It's right to get the kill onto Pred and another round onto the board for Team Metal X. Four. Oh, that's not looking too good. Very desperate, and they've got a lot of attackers to deal with. Yeah. The attackers are making it really hard for them with all these soft breeze pulls from above. Like, you cannot sit anywhere safely before you're going to be splattered out from above. So that's definitely making it real hard for the defenders here. We saw Legion on a nice angle, but he gets gone down by the person on top of the main stairs here. That is not too good. It's only two more defenders and one is on half HP. They have to stop this push within 20 seconds from happening and Zofia is able to get another kill. She is gunned down by the smoke though, but he's on half HP and needs to stop. Four players, the plan is going down. Thermite is able to finish this plan, but look at this. There's plan cover being established right now. The smoke has nowhere to go. As the match continues, you will probably see some repeating strategies. It could become a bit boring if you're repeating what they're doing if that has happened for the third time already. You'll also experience some dual moments in the gameplay. I use these moments to describe the matchup so far. Do I see any repeating strategies and what effect do they have on the outcome of the rounds? In the next clip, you'll see me describing the attacker strategy and why it was so successful in the previous round. I'm also describing what operators they're picking and how it could counter another operator. 
Exactly, but I'm gonna explain what I'm seeing here because uh, obviously me being new to casting, I'm not that good with all the strategies that are happening here, but I see a clear thing that is happening. Um, every time that we go to a uh, gaming bar, uh, we see that makers first try to gain control Attackers in the northern side, the bomb. bedroom area, statue area area. They gain that control real quickly, like in a, within a minute or so. And then they push towards the 90 hallway and try to get the vault wall open. Um, they didn't succeed that, they did succeed uh, a couple of times before. They didn't do that right now, so they expanded their push towards that 90 hallway there and um, by the door. But I just don't think that we've seen enough adaptation from Team Heretics to actually stop that push because this is like the third time that they've done it the exact same push can control the backside push the uh, uh, vault wall and they've not really adapted to it that far as that they were able to stop the attackers from coming there so that's pretty interesting and now we get to the important question what should you do if you want to become a caster as well like I said practice a lot because practice really does make perfect once you feel comfortable enough with your own casting you can apply to become an easel caster for Rainbow Six Siege, this gives you the permission to broadcast specific competitive matches. You can apply to become a caster for this game and other games on the ESL website. If you're applying, they're gonna ask you for some footage of your own casting. It could be useful to have a casting reel prepared. You can either record yourself while casting or you can clip some of your casting that you really liked. Put them together in a video editing software and put some music underneath it for a really good atmosphere. All right. That is it for this video. If you want to see more of me or my casting, make sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash fast10. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with your casting.